Welcome to the course on green technologies for African micro, small and medium sized enterprises. Today, we will cover the third of six modules in the course. In this lecture, we will discuss concrete examples of green technologies in selected sectors in Africa. This module has three specific objectives. First, the module will explain the concept of business model innovation providing specific examples such as digital platforms. Second, the module will discuss the concept of climate smart agriculture and elaborate how it can mitigate climate risk in Africa. Third, the module will explore the role of digital technologies in improving enterprise resilience and sustainability in the agriculture sector. Green technologies can be successfully employed in many economic sectors. Some of the domains where green technologies are relevant are the following. Agriculture and agribusiness. Renewable energy production and distribution nature conservation and biodiversity, green manufacturing, etc. Broadly speaking, we can classify innovations into three categories. Product innovation refers to a novel products that use new technology developments. Examples are the iPad and electric cars. Service innovation refers to new and improved services or processes. A good example is incremental change through Kaizen as discussed in our other previous lecture. The third kind of innovation is what we call business model innovation. To understand business model innovation, we must first define business models. What is a business model? A business model is a generic name used to describe the business approach for creating, delivering, and capturing value. Compared to product and service innovation, Business model innovation involves significant changes in the following key business model components. The value proposition, which is the feature of the product service offered to customers. The value creation process, which is the operating model of the manufacturing or service delivery and the revenue model which is the pricing and marketing mechanism. Business model innovation hence entails significant changes in multiple elements of the business model, including the following. The design of the product or service offering. The organizational process of value creation and delivery, the technical elements of value creation or delivery, and the marketing and pricing process of value capture. Digital technologies have become critical enablers of business model innovation. The platform business model is a major example of business model innovation that is made possible by digital technology. Platforms create value by facilitating interactions and matchmaking between different customer segments and sellers. These include 
social networks such as YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Online marketplaces such as Jumaya, Amazon, and eBay. And ride-hailing service providers such as Uber. The platform business model enables buyers and sellers to find each other in one place. The major function of platforms is hence facilitating matchmaking. Platform business models enable buyers and sellers to find each other. E-commerce companies such as Amazon and Jumaya provide a platform where thousands of retail businesses sell to customers directly. Netflix gives access to a rich database of movies, shows, and comedy specials for an affordable subscription fee. Facebook and Google enable business advertisers to reach consumers. There are several examples of innovative platforms in Africa. In agriculture, business like M Farm and Twiga in Kenya offer online platforms that connect urban food buyers and rural farmers. In services, Lynx, also in Kenya, provides a digital platform that connects households and businesses with informal workers. Jumaya is a world-known e-commerce platform with a footprint in dozens of African countries. Kayakaya in Nigeria provides a platform that matches lenders and borrowers to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uber for Tractor is a platform used by farmers in several African countries to rent tractors. These novel business models enable businesses to overcome various challenges in Africa, including the low purchasing power of customers, which makes it necessary to provide low prices, bottlenecks in accessing information, capital, and other resources, and the fragmentation of markets along linguistic, geographic, and political lines. Please use the QR code or website link to the right of the screen to watch a short YouTube video. The video describes how Mpasa, one of Africa's power platforms applications, was able to extend financial access and payment services in the continent. As explained earlier, a business model refers to the business approach for creating, delivering, and capturing value. The revenue model is a part of the business model that relates to the pricing and monetization of products and services. The revenue model provides answers to the questions of how to reach customers, how much to charge, and how to collect revenues. Let's now go through a few innovative revenue models that are used widely. The usage-based model is similar to the way electric and water utilities charge prices based on usage. It is also called 
pay as you go model as consumers pay per use. For example, the Canyon firm Mcopa sells solar power kits to consumers following the usage based model. Every day, consumers pay the day's cost of using the solar kit, which is about 50 cents of US dollars. The money is transferred using a mobile money system of M-Pesa. The revenue model is highly attractive for African consumers who have a low purchasing power. Another type of model is what is called the subscription leasing model. This is a system where customers pay a subscription fee periodically, for example, weekly or monthly. For example, Netflix uses this model to give customers access to its movie database. The consumable model is a revenue model where a customer pays for your product, but also pays ongoing fees for using it. For example, telecom operators provide mobile phones for sale, but also collect subscription fees. HP sells printers, but most of its profits come from selling accessories to its printers, in particular, inkjet cartridges. The bait and hook revenue model involves providing an attractive, inexpensive, or free initial product or service offering. The goal is to encourage continuing future purchases of related products or services. For example, Gillette uses a distribute razor handles for free to create demand for its disposable blades. Businesses that adopt this revenue model will initially lose money, but they make up for it in time. In a freemium business model, most customers freely use the basic functionality of the product. Some of these customers will pay an upgrade to access premium features. For example, Gmail, Google Drive, and Dropbox charge prices only for buyers of their premium services. The transaction fee model is often used by online retailers that charge a commission fee from transactions. eBay, for example, receives a fee from each successful auction paid by the seller. Advertising-based revenue model is common among internet companies that offer free services to attract potential advertising targets. For example, Google and Facebook collect advertising revenue from businesses that target users of their platforms. Please use the QR code or our website link to the right side of the screen to watch a short YouTube video. The video describes how the Canyon firm in Copa sells solar systems to rural households using the pay-as-you-go revenue model. Based on the video you just watched, explain the nature of the revenue model used by MCOPA. Do you see the potential of similar innovations in other businesses? How about some potential challenges?
In the second half of this lecture, we will discuss the current practices and future prospects of climate smart agriculture in Africa. Africa's agricultural sector stands out from agriculture in other parts of the world in a number of ways. First, agriculture in Africa is dominated by tens of millions small farms, which employ 65% of the continent's labor force. By contrast, in advanced economies, agriculture is dominated by large commercial farms that employ only 5% of the workforce. A second defining feature of Africa's agriculture is its very low productivity. A rapid productivity improvement is needed to feed a rising population, which is expected to reach almost 3 billion by the year 2100. Agriculture in Africa is expected to face significant disruption from climate change. As shown in the figure, agriculture yields are expected to decline by 15% to 35% between now and the year 2050. In Africa, agriculture, along with land use and forest change, represents 56% of total greenhouse gas emissions. Globally, the agriculture sector represents 20% to 30% of total greenhouse gas emissions, which is expected to increase significantly by the year 2050. Agriculture is also a major consumer of water, currently accounting for 70% of all fresh water withdrawals globally. Climate change will have significant impact on food security and agricultural production in Africa. Some of the expected changes are higher mean temperatures, lower mean rainfall, increased variability in temperature and rainfall, severe soil erosion, including landslides, greater crop water demand, and greater prevalence of extreme climate. These changes will lead to severe crop failures that reduce food production. Climate smart agriculture is an approach of transforming and reorienting agricultural systems to effectively support development and ensure food security under climate change. Climate smart agriculture is aided by rapid expansion of access to digital technologies. More than half a billion Africans use mobile phones, which can facilitate exchange of knowledge about agricultural practices. The internet can also enable precision agriculture that uses real-time data to inform decisions. Sustainable productivity to ensure food security without further depleting or polluting water and soil resources. Enhanced resilience of farmers by reducing their exposure to climate risk and building their capacity to adapt with shocks and longer term stresses. Climate change mitigation by reducing emissions per unit of product, reducing 
deforestation and managing farmlands in a manner that captures carbon. Please use the QR code or website link to the right of the screen to watch a short YouTube video. As outlined in the video, a number of measures are needed to make climate smart agriculture a reality. Expanding the evidence base on climate smart agriculture, improving policies that support climate smart agriculture, empowering local institutions and combining new financing options. In the remaining part of this lecture, we will briefly go through four aspects of climate smart agriculture. One, improved agriculture practices. Two, data analysis and remote sensing. Three, adaptive markets and institutions. And four, agrometeorology. Improved agriculture practices include a broad range of practices that improve the climate resilience, adaptation, and mitigation of agricultural systems. Among other things, these practices include integrated soil fertility management and agroforestry systems, diversifying farming by combining different agricultural activities, drought cycle management practices, conservation agriculture that protects and nurtures the soil, sustainable management of pathogens and pests, water and energy efficient farming practices, farming practices that improve productivity and new crop varieties that have better disease resistance. Adding value to waste from agriculture is an important element of improved agricultural practices. Agrocentric ventures in Ghana, for example, processes agricultural waste into bio-organic inputs such as biofertilizer, biopesticide, Biocar and animal dietary supplement. These reduces dependence of synthetic fertilizers that damage soil. Another example is We Farm, which provides a toll free peer to peer SMS service that allows farmers to get relevant and timely farming advice and guidance. Remote sensing systems provide near real-time data for improving energy and water usage efficiency, GIS mapping, and big data analysis can be used to monitor water use and to assess drought risk. Such systems can also be used to adjust water pressure to enhance efficiency of water use, real-time data streaming, integration, and analysis can generate metrics that improve decision-making. Early warning systems can be used to predict extreme weather events using satellites and mobile communication channels. Another related application in climate modeling and prediction using data from satellites and sensors. Moreover, GIS mapping and big data analytics can enable agricultural experts 
to manage natural disasters and recovery systems. Different digital technologies are key for improving agricultural productivity and increasing farm efficiency. Internet of Things. UIT sensors or cameras can monitor farmer data and crop health in real time, enabling precision farming activities that minimize water and fertilize use. Digital platforms can collate and organize farm sensor data and integrate it with other data sources to enable even more targeted advice. Blockchain technology can enhance supply chain logistics and facilitate certification schemes by improving the traceability of agricultural produce. The third domain of climate smart agriculture is improving markets and institutions. As climate shocks become more common, there is a need to protect farmers from climate hazards by providing them with affordable insurance coverage. Index-based weather insurance supported by ICT tools can be used to protect farmers from extreme weather events. It provides rapid compensation in the event of natural disasters, such as wildfires, droughts, and floods. Governments can subsidize premium payments to support poor farmers. Agro Meteorology is the fourth and last domain of climate smart agriculture. Agro meteorology is the provision of specific agricultural advice from each farmer or village based on its own rain gauge and other climate information. Climate data, crop information, and soil information can be augmented by a simple crop model to provide tailored farming advice. This slide shows you an example of agrometeorology advice providing to millet and sorghum farmers in Mali. Due to the high spatial variability of rainfall, farmers in different villages receive tailored farming advice. The kind of guidance can achieve productivity increases of up to 17% for millet and 20% for sorghum. Based on our discussion thus far, please address the following questions of reflection. Mention at least two examples of climate smart agriculture that are in use in your country? What kinds of challenges do businesses face in implementing climate smart agriculture? This discussion question invites you to reflect on the benefits of business model innovation. The question will be posted on the online discussion forum. You are asked 
to provide written answers of at least 300 words on the online platform. This exercise will be a part of your final project that should be submitted at the end of this. Interested participants will also be given a chance to make a short presentation of their project on our live class on November 16th. Thank you for your attention and for making time to watch this lecture. The next lecture will be posted on the online platform early next week. Until the next lecture, goodbye.